Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome to USCF Fields short videos part of our free online GRE course. These videos will help you prepare for the GRE which is essential for graduate level admissions in most universities in the United States and for the Fulbright scholarship program. I am Amna Mahmood and I have been affiliated with the US EFP in various capacities since 2017. This session will be for GRE Verbal and this is video number 10 of 12 in this series. In this video, we will look at various tips recommended by the ATS, which is the body that organizes the GRE for both the essay task, that is the issue and the argument essay. In the 30 minute analyze an issue task, you will be given a statement by an author and this will be followed by a set of instructions. You will have to construct your own argument by taking a position on the statement and providing ev evidence to support your views on the issue. Please keep in mind that you will not be given multiple issue task options from which you have to select one. You will be given only one issue prompt and you will have to answer that. Please also note that the time spent reading the statement and the instructions as well as thinking about and outlining a possible response is included in the 30 minutes that are allocated to this task. So unlike in a paper-based test where you still might be able to sneak in a few words as you wait for the invigilator to come around to collect your paper, in a computer-based test, 30 minutes means exactly that and not a minute more or a minute less. In the 30-minute analyze an argument task, you will be given a brief passage in which the author makes a case for some course of action or interpretation of events by presenting claims that he or she supports by evidence. Your task is to discuss the logical soundness of the author's case by critically examining the line of reasoning and the use of evidence. Similar to what we just discussed for the issue task, you will be given only one argument passage that you will have to answer and that the time you spend reading the passage and the instructions that follow and thinking about a response is included in the 30 minutes that are allocated to this task. As everyone should already know by now, GIE test in Pakistan is completely computer-based. The two essays will have to be typed out on a basic word processor developed by the ETS. The basic word processor contains the following functionalities. You can insert text, delete text, cut and paste, and undo the previous action. Tools such as spell checker and grammar checker are not available in the ETS software and this is done primarily to maintain fairness for those examinees in different locations around the world uh, who must handwrite their essays at paper delivered administrations. Okay, so let's talk about a few tips for attempting the essay tasks. Make an outline. Before beginning your written response, be sure to read the issue statement or the argument passage and the instructions that follow very carefully. For example, if we talk about the issue task here, um, you should think about the issue from several points of view, think about the position you're going to take and the main reasons and examples you could use to support that position. In the process of thinking through your answer, you should make notes in the scratch paper that you will be given at the testing center. Or you can also choose to take, uh, take some notes or make an outline on the computer. If you do it on the computer, you will end up saving time because you have the option of copy and pasting in the SS software. Given that the SS have to be typed, you will have to brush up your typing skills. So it's not enough that you have developed a great outline and thought of relevant examples to include in your essay. You have to ensure that you're also able to type them out in the designated time. You will only be scored for what you have typed, so please budget your time accordingly. Save a few minutes at the end of each time essay task to check for obvious errors. Although a few spelling or grammatical errors here and there will not affect your score, the continuous errors will distract the rater and could lead to a lower score. The GIE raters uh, scoring your response are not really looking for a right answer. As far as they're concerned, there's no correct position to take, 
but what they're really assessing is your ability to address the specific instructions and articulate your response accordingly. In other words, it's important that you address the central issue according to the specific instructions laid out in both the essay tasks. Okay, so in this slide and this following slide, we will look at a set of instructions for issue tasks. Each issue task is accompanied by one of the following set of instructions, and let's read these instructions together. The first one reads, write a response in which you discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with the statement and explain your reasoning for the position you take. In developing and supporting your position, you should consider ways in which the statement might or might not hold true and explain how these considerations shape your position. Uh, the second one reads, write a response in which you discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with the recommendation and explain your reasoning for the position you take. In developing and supporting your position, describe specific circumstances in which adopting the recommendation would or would not be advantages and explain how these examples shape your position. The third set of instructions that you could possibly see is write a response in which you discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with the claim. In developing and supporting your position, be sure to address the most compelling reasons and or examples that could be used to challenge your position. Write a response in which you discuss which view more closely aligns with your own position and explain your reasoning for the position you take. In developing and supporting your position, you should address both of the views presented. Write a response in which you discuss the extent to which you agree or disagree with the claim and the reasons on which that claim is based. And, you know, the last set of instructions that you could possibly see is uh, write a response in which you discuss your views on the policy and explain your uh, reasoning for the position you take. In developing and supporting your position, you should consider the possible consequences of implementing the policy and explain how these consequences shape your position. From these instructions, you will see that GI is not really looking for a correct answer. What it is doing is rather allowing you to provide your opinion on a statement or a recommendation or a claim or a policy given your unique experience. And it also allows you to think about how to convince somebody who may refute the stance that you have taken to see whether you are able to think holistically about an issue. So critically analyzing uh, the issue prompt and looking at the following set of instructions, it's very important for you to be able to develop a focused response to the, uh, to the essay tasks. Okay, um, so the argument task consists of a passage in which the author makes the case for some course of action or interpretation of events by presenting claims that are backed by reason and evidence. Similar to the issue task, it is accompanied by a set of instructions, and let's look at a few examples here. The first one that we have is uh, reads, write a response in which you discuss what specific evidence is needed to evaluate the argument and explain how the evidence would weaken or strengthen the argument. The second example here reads, uh, write a response in which you examine the stated and or unstated assumptions of the argument. Be sure to explain how the argument depends on these assumptions and what the implications are for the argument if the assumptions prove unwarranted. The third one reads, uh, write a response in which you discuss what questions would need to be answered in order to decide whether the recommendation and the argument on which it is based are reasonable. Be sure to explain how the answers to these questions would help to evaluate the recommendation. Uh, the fourth set of instructions that you can possibly see is uh, as follows. Write a response in which you discuss what questions would need to be answered in order to decide whether the advice and the argument on which it is based are reasonable. Be sure to explain how the answers to these questions would help you evaluate the advice. 
And the last example that we have here is as follows. Write a response in which you discuss what questions would need to be answered in order to decide whether the recommendation is likely to have a predicted result. Be sure to explain how the answers to these questions would help to evaluate the recommendation. Uh, for the argument task, this is not a comprehensive list of instructions for, from which you will receive one based on the argument passage that you are asked to do. If you want to see the complete list of instructions, uh, please visit this link on the ETS website. In the following two videos, we will do an example of the issue task and the argument task. For your practice, ETS has published the entire pool of tasks from which your test uh, task will be selected. The issue topic pool can be accessed uh, on this uh, link here. And the argument to topic pool can be accessed in the second link. Uh, you should take out time and practice some of these examples as you prepare for the GRE test. Thank you for watching. I hope this session proved to be useful for you. Please remember to check out other videos in this series. To wrap up, I'm going to conclude with the main takeaways that we learned in this video.